The work we choose to translate is my fair lady. Today, our presentation will be divided into four parts. The first is background information, then the summary of the story, translation issues, and the conclusion part. First, the background information. Pygmalion is a Greek mythic story about a king. Pygmalion is his name. He is very good at carving, but had no love for all the women in his country, and decided never to marry. He regarded sculpture as his life, and he spent every day in it. Until one day, he fell in love with an ivory female statue. He carved with his own hand. So, he begged the goddess of love to make the statue be his, his wife. The god of love was moved by his sincerity and made the statue into a living, beautiful young woman. The two met very happy, and in the witness of the god of love, they married and lived a happily every day and ever after. The play Pygmalion, Pygmalion written by George Bernard Shaw, is based on this story. Bernard Shaw's dramatic language is sharp, witty, humorous, and with strong irony. His plays are closely related to reality and dare to touch upon the most essential problems of the capitalist society. Pygmalion was written at a time when standard pr pronunciation was extremely prevalent. Pronunciation was a sign of one's social status, and the dialects were spawned by the upper class. This explains Higgins' great dislike of Eliza's accent in the early period, and the restriction of Eliza's accent and origin on her development. George Bernard Shaw is very good at expressing the character's conflict of personality and sort of through the character's dialogue and exchange of thoughts and feelings. This makes the linguistic expressions in the play a rich source of inspiration for our translators. Then I will give a brief summary of the story. There are two main characters in the play. The thematic professor Henry Higgins and the flower girl, Eliza Doolittle. They encountered at a rainy night in front of the church. Higgins recorded a variety of accents in the crowd. Eliza mistook him for a detective, and the two met in such an embarrassing situation that Higgins was so unimpressed with Eliza that he shamed her about her accent, saying, Just stay with me for a couple of months, and I will make a real lady out of her, and nobody will ever find out who she really is. Eliza is a very brave girl. Realizing her limitations, she went to Higgins and wanted to learn from him. Higgins made a bet with Colonel Pickering, and then he will teach Eliza. And at first, Higgins treated Eliza just like a toy with no respect. Then after living with Eliza for a long time, Higgins discovered many advantages of Eliza. Beautiful, intelligent, and very talented. Higgins gradually realized that Eliza had a very strong influence on his life and he found it hard to leave her. But Higgins had always been a very bad-tempered and arrogant man, who never considered the moods and feelings of others. Although Higgins had come to realize some of his mistakes during his time with Eliza and in the later fights, he had not changed very much. Eliza, on the other hand, continued to grow as his he learned. Not only did she successfully attend the Queen's dinner party 
and become a true lady, but her state of mind was also greatly changed. From being dependent on others for her survival, she became an independent and complete individual. We refer to the plot and the language of the three versions of George Bernard Shaw's plays Pygmalion and Alan J. Lerner's adaptation of the musical of the, and the film My Fair Lady, and select six of them for integration and adaptation. The first act is a first meeting in the front of the church. In the second act, Eliza goes to Higgins' home and asks him to teach her. The third act is the detailed process of their lessons. The fourth act is watching the, ho the horse race, which is the test of their lessons. The fifth act is the quarrel between Higgins and Eliza after the ball. In act six, Higgins and Eliza quarrel at Miss Mrs. Higgins' house, and Eliza finally decides to leave Higgins. We choose these six sequences, sequences because we wanted to retain the form elements of the play, but also wanted to present a more complete storyline within the time limit. So we omitted the dance sequences and kept the two act choral sequences. We believe that the dialogues in the last two acts best reflect Eliza's growth in her personality. And about our part three translation issues. There are a lot of translation issues here. First, translation of the special synthesis. About this part, uh, I choose the community communicative translation theory. This theory what I, is what I mainly use when translating such synthesis because translation, communicative translation attempts to make the reader's experience of reading the target text as close as possible to that of the reader reading the original text. There are a lot of tongue twisters in the play. For example, the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain, but in Hedford, Hereford, and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. There are almost no alliterative tongue twisters in Chinese, so a little translation would miss the subtlety of the original sentence to Chinese audience. The word tian was used for four times in successions. For example, the translation 这几天天天天气都不是很好。这几天天天 and 天气, this phrase, uh, the word 天 was used for four times in succession. This is a special tongue twister in Chinese, which is characterized by breaking the sentence. And the second sentence I translated into 但不论是荷兰、荷兰还是湖南，都是很难看到海啸的。In this sentence, 荷兰、荷兰、湖南 and 很难. These words in Pinyin, I used the same initial consonants. Uh, he and lu. There is a problem in the Southern Chinese dialect of nu and lu. Southern Chinese may have trouble distinguishing between nu and lu in accent. So I think this can make our Chinese audience get the similar experience when these lines and flaws are performed by actors. Um, in the movie, at the teaching plot, the script writer chose a verse here. The verse is, with blackest, most the flower pots were thinly crossed, one and all. This line is from Tennyson's poem, Mariana. The poem follows a theme common to most of Tennyson's work, frustrated isolation. 
the, pro the protagonist of Mariana is a woman who constantly laments her lack of connection with society. Isolation defines her existence. Her desire for connection leads her to long for death at the end of each stanza. I feel there is a connection between this poem and Eliza's life. In the earlier part of her life, Eliza lived alone in the ghetto after her biological mother died, and her father don't want to, didn't want to support her. She really doesn't have the sense of belonging, which fits the theme of the poem, frustrated isolation. However, if the, if the poem is translated literally, it will be difficult to resonate with the Chinese speaking audience. The image of, I think the image of Eliza is similar to that of the most lover. Both of, they are both, they both are weak and insignificant, but bursting with vitality and ambition. Therefore, I choose the poem, Tai Hua Rong Yi Xiao, Ye Xuan Mu Dan Kai, as an alternative. Then, the accent translation. Dialect is a feature of the play. Since Eliza had a strong dialect accent in early stage, in terms of performance, we use the dialect to perform. So in translation, I also combine the expression of dialects to choose words. Uh, the this sentence that isn't real writing. I choose the phrase Gui Hua Fu to translate because the phrase is fit for our dialect expression. And I think the word choice can reflect Eliza's personality more. In um, other part, uh, other translation issues and the conclusion part will be presented by my partner. examples and the first example is about grammatical errors and let's look at the example and the source text is Eliza said you don't care I know you don't care you don't care if I was dead I'm nothing to you not as much as them sleepers and he can said those sleepers and the target text is about and and the translation between Zhe Xie and Zhe Zhuang Tuoxie becomes a uh, translation issue for us. And in this case, when Elisha said them slippers, she meant to say a pair of slippers or these slippers. She came from a very low class. She knew little about English grammar. She didn't get educated. She's just a flower girl. When I tried to translate them slippers into Chinese, I first used the principle of communicative translation to translate it into Taman Tuosi. Then I realized that I was translating the word as it was meant to be. This is perfectly fine. And this is perfectly fine in written translation, but in theater I couldn't help but think what if you what if the audience had just taken it as a slip of the tongue that on the part of the actor. So I picked a more subtle way to translate using the principle of communicative translation to translate it as a quantitative error in Chinese uh, which uh, very Chinese can understand it's, it's really a mistake in this sentence and here, are the, uh, here is a second example for grammatical errors the example is Elisa said, I wouldn't marry you if you asked me, and you are nearer my age than what he is, and he then said, then he is. And the point is, 虽然你年轻他, and he said, 是比他年轻, and the translation is, 你年轻他, 就是比他年轻. And in this case, I choose to, uh, transfer from to In this sentence, it is still a grammatical mistake. This sentence is a comparative clause led by them. What should not appear in the sentence? 
which is a grammatical error. And when translating this sentence, I try to use the principle of semantic translation, not just tell them the original meaning of this sentence, but also review the purpose of the author. The reason why the author designed such a wordplay in that he want, is that he wants to reveal that Eliza is from a very low class, so I choose to translate it into and And here comes to the third example of wording. The number three is, the source text is, Higgins said, you see, the great secret Eliza is not a question of good manners or bad manners, or any particular sorts of manners, but having the same manners for all human souls. The question is not whether I treat you rudely, but whether you have, haven't heard me treat anyone else better. And in this case, I translate good manners or bad manners into 良好的态度或是不好的态度, and for all human souls, I translate it into 发自内心的同样的态度. And from this part, uh, it is about the characters of the, of this Higgins. And Higgins was a well worded, well educated linguistic of high standing. He is very particular about his choice of words when he is speaking. In this case, he also used words like uh, good manners, bad manners, and all human souls, which cause translation issues for translator. When I translate these terms, I try to pick up words, more decent words, to translate them. And because he kept talking in this part, I have to make sure the structure is neat and local. And the sentences need to match the original text. So I translate good manners and bad manners into 良好的态度或者不好的态度 to keep the structure parallel. And I use conversion and amplification to translate all human souls because the meaning of this sentence is that Higgins thinks that he has the absolutely same attitude to everyone from deep of his heart. So I choose to translate this hidden meaning by using the semantic translation. And for the fourth part is uh, about the conversion. And the source text is, Miss Higgins said, hasn't he suddenly turned chilly? I do hope we won't have any unreasonable cold spells. They bring on so much influenza, and the whole of our family is susceptible to it. And I choose to translate it into And this is a case of conversion. One of the uh, major differences between English and Chinese is the use of the passive voice. In English, the passive voice is used when it is not necessary to point out subject. When you don't want to point out that, when there is no way to say the, the active person or for the sake of consistency. In English, when the subject of the sentence is the bearer of sufferer of the action, the verb is the passive voice. In English, when the subject of the sentence is the bearer of or sufferer of the action, the verb is in the passive voice, when, which is usually in the form of be plus past participle of the verb. In this case, the term is suspicious to it is the, meaning, is the means of passive voice. So I try to use show down to substitute it. And here comes to the fifth example about amplification and omission. The source text is Higgins said, Mother, the most confounded thing that you, you, and I choose to use amplification in this case, and to plus nizomatajer. And here is another example about Higgins said, you said, Eliza, all men are not confirmed cold bachelors like me and the colonel, most men of the marrying and the and I just, uh, the colonel into people in Shangxia. And in these sentences, I use the principle of amplification. In the first sentence, Higgins didn't finish his sentence. When he found Eliza, Eliza in his mother's house, he just said you. 
So I use the principle of amplification to translate it into Nism Vedra to add more details to make the audiences more understandable. And in the second case, I also use the principle of amplification to add the name of Colonel Pickering, which gives the audience a better understanding of the colonel's and identity. And in the end, for the uh, conclusion part, we generally adopted the strategy of semantic translation in translating the dialogue parts of the script because we want to pres preserve in the characters of Higgins and Eliza. Higgins is a professor who drew words, and Eliza is a flower girl who has never read a book. And we try not to make any major changes in the text so as to preserve the original text and retain the flavor, flavor of the original text. On the other hand, we also face some translation issues that are not easy to translate, such as dialect, uh, poems, verses, grammatical, grammatical errors, wordings. And in this case, cases, we use communicative translation to translate the script and make a lot of changes in structure due to the differences in form of English and Chinese to make it more easy to recite for us. And in all, through the combination of these two principles, we are able to give our own solutions to the translation issues we faced when translating, and finally translated the script successfully. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you.